you don't have to send out a bunch of back and forth messages to get the information that you want from emails, chats, and Teams posts. Microsoft Loop can help you simplify the process and improve your communications. So we're going to take a look at a few common scenarios that waste time and drive some of us crazy. You are working on a project and have come to a point where multiple people need to provide feedback so that you can move on to the next phase. What typically happens is you send out an email that looks something like this. You're going to provide some options and ask for your feedback. When the email is sent, it goes out to multiple people and now I have to scan all the answers to collate the data and come to a consensus. A small set of people might not seem like that big of a deal, but with all the other work to consider, every email you can eliminate counts. Instead, I'm going to go to the Messages tab at the top of the screen and click on the dropdown next to Loop Components in the Collaborate section. There are a few preformatted options to choose from. Pick the one that best fits your scenario, but for this scenario, a voting table is going to work best. When you insert the loop component, a container is added to the email where everyone can cast their vote. The loop will update in real time, multiple people can edit it at once, and no one has to send a reply to the email. The preformatted voting table has four columns with some generic headings. You can update the header names to fit your scenario. You can also delete columns if you don't need them. For example, I want to change the pros column to comments, but I don't need the cons column. Select the column you want to remove and then click the trash can icon to delete. Now I'm going to use the rows to add the choices that were originally in the body of the email. There are two rows to start with, but you can click on the new button at the bottom of the table to add more. Now I don't need the choices in the body of the email, so I'm just gonna quickly update the message and then send it. Now let's look at this from the perspective of someone who received the email. I'm logged in as Adele. When she clicks on the email, Adele will see the loop component. She's going to add her vote and a comment about her choice. And that's it, Adele is done. Next, I'm logged in as Alex. Notice that when Alex opens the email, Adele's vote and comment is already there. Additionally, Alex can see that Adele is still in the loop component because her picture is at the top center of the box and her cursor location is indicated with a colored cursor icon. Alex is going to vote for YouTube. Meanwhile, everyone else voted as well. If we go back to Adele's view, you can see that without a single email being sent, she can see all the votes and the comments. It looks like YouTube is the top choice. To see who voted for the option, you can hover the mouse over the number to see the names. You can also hover over comments. Lee has a good point here, and I might want to follow up with him in a chat to explore the idea. Now I want to switch back to my account. As the person who sent the email, I no longer see it in the inbox. There are two ways that I can find the information in the loop component. First, I can go to the sent items folder and look at the email. If you get as much email as I do, then finding something in the sent folder might not be ideal. The better option is to go to the app launcher in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, also known as the waffle icon then choose loop from the available apps. Now you're in the full loop app. It can do a lot of things, but we'll talk about that in another video. Today, I want to focus on the recents tab indicated by the clock icon. Here is where you can find the loop associated with the email. The title of the loop is the same as the subject line of the email. The other option is to use the search indicated by the magnifying glass and search by the title. No matter which option you choose, you will see the information that was gathered from the email that you sent. We're gonna leave Loop and go over to Microsoft Teams so that we can look at a second scenario of how you can use Loop to simplify your communications. Adele and I have an ongoing chat where we have been brainstorming ideas for assets to include in Project Alchemy. There are a lot of ways to capture this information, but the reality is this is how Adele and I tend to communicate by quickly jotting down ideas. 
The problem is that as we discuss other topics, our ideas are harder to find later since chats are not threaded. So I'm going to use loop to keep the ideas together. Start by typing a chat like you normally would. At the end of the chat bar is the loop icon. When you click on it, a component is added to the chat. You can leave it at the default paragraph or add one of the pre-formatted options. I'm going to select bullet list and then add a few ideas. I'm also going to give this loop a title and then click send. When Adele pops into the loop from chat, I can see her adding another idea in real time. I still need to keep track of this message because we talk about a lot of topics in our chat. To do that, hover the mouse over the message, a toolbar will pop up, click on the three dots, and select pin. Now the message is pinned to the details pane on the right side of the screen so I can quickly get back to it. If you don't see a details pane, it's probably collapsed. Click the little icon at the top right side of the screen that looks like an arrow in a box to either open or close your details pane. Now, because I gave the loop a name, the pinned comment has the same name. The third example of how to simplify your communications with loops is in a Teams post. In the other examples, the Project Alchemy team decided where to post some content and we have some ideas of what that content will be. Now it's time to divvy up the work. We will do that by going to the video production team and starting a post. I always suggest a subject line for every message to make it easier for the team members to identify what the thread is about. I'm going to quickly add a message so there's context around what the loop component is for. Go to the bottom left corner of the post box and click on the loop icon. In this scenario, a task list is ideal. The cool thing about this component is that there is a connection to the planner task app so that when an item is assigned to someone, it will show on their task list and the due date can trigger reminder notifications. In the bucket column, the only option by default is to do just like it is in planner, but you can click on the word to do to see a drop down where you can add additional options. Click add an option and type in the ones that fit your project. For this scenario, we need in progress, ready for review, and completed. While making these changes, it's possible to update the color for each step. As I added the options, it did change the bucket for the task, so I'll just put it back to the to-do bucket. A few more tasks were added and assigned. You can use some basic filters on the columns to sort by ascending or descending to group the tasks together. It is also possible to switch the view for the task list. On the left side of the loop box, click the little drop down next to the icon that looks like four squares. From the drop down, you can choose board view, which looks like a traditional planner view, or you can choose calendar view, which will display the tasks on a calendar based on the due date. For now, I'm going to use the table view and click post. Now, as the team completes their tasks, they can check them off and everyone can see the status of each task. So there you go. We looked at three ways you can use loop to streamline your communication. Hopefully this gave you some ideas for how Loop can help you with your projects. Drop a comment below to share. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.